Hey, my name is Rowan Smith, and I want to welcome you to the Training for Trekking podcast. Now, this is the world's very first podcast, which is entirely dedicated to helping you train, prepare, and conquer your upcoming hike, trek, or mountain adventure. So once a week, I'm going to be giving you quality and practical information on the subjects of physical preparation for trekking, dealing with attitude, and nutrition on the trail, so you can know everything you need to be doing to have the best chance of a safe, enjoyable, and successful adventure. So now you know what you're in for, let's get into today's episode. So today we are talking about strategies for training when you're working at home. Now, this episode was inspired by a chat I was having with online client Linny the other day. Basically, we were on a coaching call and she was telling me how she's working from home at the moment um, and she was still wanting to continue to train. And purely for sanity's sake, um, she needed to adjust her training a little bit to help her support herself through the day. So it wasn't so much about getting physically fit and preparing for an adventure anymore, but just trying to get through those long days of just sitting at home on the computer, just trying to keep the mental health strong, trying to keep the energy levels up and trying to keep a little bit of positivity. Because as I just said, it wasn't really just a physical goal we're aiming for, but at this stage with people are at home and they are isolated and they haven't got other people around, a big thing for mental health as well. And so we were talking through a number of strategies together, which we might be able to fit into our day. And I thought at the time that this might be perfect subject for a podcast, because I know so many people are in a similar situation at the moment. And I know the strategies that could help her are probably going to be able to help many other people as well. And there's quite a few strategies that I use myself when working at home. So the following things could be a really good idea to have a think about for anyone who is currently uh, working from home and wanting to maintain their training in one way or another. Now, to be honest, this probably won't be incredibly useful for people who have their kids at home too, who are trying to work with their kids at home. In all honesty, that must be such a nightmare for so many people, and I am having to think about what I can talk about and what strategies might be a bit more practical there, but this episode today is a bit more um, directed for those who are at home alone or they're just with a partner and a housemate and they need a few options to get them through the day. So, let's get into it. Option number one is simply breaking up your normal workout. So, if you usually complete, say, a 60-minute strength session in the gym, Sometimes it can be hard to get yourself in the zone for that when you're at home. And you know, putting 60 minutes aside to train in your living room or something like that, it can really be a bit of a struggle. So if this is the case, feel free to break this up. Do three 20-minute sessions through the day or two half-an-hour sessions or just cut down the sessions times as a whole. Whatever it is, you know, this um, approach might not be particularly optimal. And if we were trying to really train for a significant adventure in the perfect world, this might not be the best way to go about things. But at now, optimal isn't realistic. We're not looking for that. We're looking for practical. We're looking for stuff that can fit into your life and not only fit into your life, but also enhance your life. And a 60-minute session in one book, for some people it might work, but a lot of others, I don't think it really is incredibly practical. So we're throwing optimal all out the window at the moment and we're going to go with this uh, this approach of practical and for most hikers out there it's going to be close enough either way you're not going to lose that much benefits out of the training it's only going to be in the small percentages and it doesn't really matter in all honesty and one of the huge benefits of this is it just gets you up and moving multiple times throughout the day so instead of just sitting in your chair staring at your computer screen probably scrolling through social media in between meetings feeling a little bit lost just stressing out and going through that negative new, negative news spiral it gets you moving multiple times through the day. It gets those endorphins up. It gives you a little bit of positivity, a little bit of excitement, and just keeps those energy levels up. So that number one in itself can be a really, really effective way of getting through your day. Number two is pick your breaks wisely. So if you have control over your particular schedule, so you aren't jam-packed with um, meetings and phone calls all day or something like that, pick three or four times during the day and get out and just do a lap around the block. Like Linny was saying, she was going out maybe two or three times a day and just doing 10 minutes on a bike and just cruising around the streets. Um, and if you're not currently locked in isolation, you have to stay at home. This can be a really good thing. It can help clear your head a little bit and get some fresh air. You can, you know, get the body moving and get out just some of that terrible home office posture, which I know so many people are probably struggling with right now. For me personally, I do this every time I make a coffee, I get up, I do a lap around the block. It takes, you know, about seven minutes or 10 minutes. And I do that a few times a day because that gets me through. It gets me in the sunshine or in the fresh air at the very least. And it just helps me clear my head. 
Um, and on top of this, more than likely your cardio training is going to be limited right now and there are limited options. Um, so if you can build in multiple sessions of 10 minutes in the day, um, and then over the week, and then over the month, and then over the maybe the month so, as we're in this situation together, that stuff's really going to add up. And you might look at the difference between, you know, day one and more day 30 of you doing that and three 10 minute sessions through the day and day 30 of you doing nothing that's going to be a huge difference in exercise so you can have a think about that again it's not really optimal but it's going to be good enough and it's going to be a lot more practical at this time the next one is go pomodoro so the pomodoro technique is a really really handy productivity technique which a lot of people use in the self-help and the productivity world and it can be a very very effective technique to use at this stage so basically it's mainly aimed at um, increasing your work productivity um, but it's also a really good way to fit in a little bit of training into your day or a little bit of stretching or a little bit of something into your day so this is how you do it you basically set your timer or set a timer for 25 minutes you choose a single task that you're going to complete in these 25 minutes so this is a work task usually something that you need to put your head down get in the zone and just focus on. And you're going to work hard for these 25 minutes. You're just going to be in the zone, no distractions, no messing around, no multitasking, no answering your phone, no anything. Just work hard for those 25 minutes. Then when the timer goes off, you get up. It doesn't matter where you are in this task. It doesn't matter where you're, um, how far you're done or whatever. You get up. You've got five minutes to go do something else. So you might have a stretch, you might have a glass of water, you might go to the toilet, but then particularly in regards to training, you do one set of a particular exercise. So for example, I was doing for a while, I was doing this exact same thing and I was doing 10 lunges on each leg. Or you could do 10 push-ups or you could do a plank or you could have a stretch or whatever. Then you grab yourself a quick drink, whatever you need to do, and then sit down and do another 25-minute timer. And then over the course of the day, you can sort of fit in you know, four, five, six, seven, depending on, depending on how many times you can do it, um, periods of exercise, that's periods, um, sets of exercise there. You get a huge amount of work done. You'll be amazed how productive you can be in those 25 minutes, but also over the course of the day, over the course of the weeks, over the course of the months, you can fit in a huge amount of extra training. And you can do the same thing with you know, stretching, you might have, you know, particularly tight hips, you might be stretching your hips in those breaks, it might be cardio, you might get up and just do 20 star jumps, or it might even be like breathing training, you might just do five minutes of diaphragmic breathing or abdominal breathing, whatever you want to fit into your day that can be a really, really effective way of going about things. And then the fourth and final thing I want to talk about today is give yourself a trigger. So using specific triggers is a really powerful technique to help build new habits. Um, and in the habit building world, this is an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important thing. Basically, when you're building a habit, a trigger is defined as an event that kicks off an automatic urge to complete a particular thing. So we've all got these particular habits we do. So it might be, you know, for bad habits, it might be, for example, every time a common one, every time someone steps on their balcony, they feel the urge to have a cigarette. Or it might be every time you go past a particular place outside and you have the feel the urge to have a coffee or have a meat pie or something like that. You know, everyone's got these particular habits and they get triggered by these certain events in the day. So a trigger can really be anything in our environment which our brain associates with a habit. So every time that a trigger goes before a habit, our brain strengthens that association and it makes that habit easier and easier and easier and easier. So this can be a bad thing if you're doing sort of a bad habit. So it might be, you know, constantly drinking or smoking or something like that. But this can be a really, really good thing if you're trying to you know, force yourself to do something positive. So it might be stretching, it might be um, having vitamins, it might be working out or anything like that. So using a particular trigger in your world can be very, very effective. So a few examples of particular types of triggers you can use is something, number one is something called a preceding event. So basically just any event that regularly happens in your day. So it might be when you wake up, might be when you brush your teeth, when you put the kettle on, when you um, go for a walk with a dog or whatever, something that you do every single day, you know that that's something you do and you might be able to attach a particular habit to that. We're going to get that to in a second. Second one is time, really, really easy. You can say, look, at 10.15, I'm going to go do something every single day and you have a timer on your phone and it buzzes, that's what you're doing. You know, that's pretty simple. A lot of people are pretty aware of that. And the other one is what you might not first think about is emotional. So if you find yourself getting frustrated, if you find yourself getting angry, if you find yourself sort of really, really stressing out about something, you might want to attach a particular habit to that. And you might say, every time I notice I'm getting angry, I'm going to stop, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to come back and 
continue to be angry if I have to be. So there really are a million triggers you can use, but a few examples that I'll put together, which I've personally used in the past, I don't do them all at the same time, but I have used in the past. Number one is a doorway trigger. So when I'm working from home, anytime you walk through a doorway, you stop and do 10 squats. And then over the course of the day, you go back and forth through that doorway so many times, you'll probably build up 150 squats or something like that. Really, really simple, really, really effective. And every time you go through that particular doorway, that's such as that trigger in your head to stop and do squats. The second one could be a coffee trigger. So every time you make a coffee or a tea, you can do 60 seconds of stretching. And just literally while your coffee's been made or before you even drink your coffee, you can just do that stretching or you can do an exercise or whatever. Another one could be anytime you're feeling annoyed. So anytime you do feel like yourself getting frustrated and annoyed, maybe get up and just do a quick lap around the block. You know, you might end up doing that three or four times in the day. You might be super stressed at the moment, but that could be a really effective way of adding a little bit of training into your day and also helping your mental health as well. Another one is social media. So, you know, we're probably all in this situation where we're working at home, we're stressing out, we end up just mindlessly scrolling through social media. So anytime you find yourself doing that, stop and do a 40 second plank or stop and do 10 squats or lunges or whatever. And then not only that, it's going to be a great way of trying to break that bad habit of just scrolling through social media, but if you do keep on doing it, that's going to be a great way to add a bit of training in. The possibilities here are really, really endless. You just have to think about what you want to commit to. Probably the most important thing here is initially, it's a little bit hard to do and you have to remind yourself. So you want to write down notes somewhere that's prominent. So if you're going through that doorway, have a big post-it note on the doorway. If you're doing the coffee one, have a post-it note on the coffee machine. If you're annoyed, just put it on like your desktop and just say, so that can get ingrained in your head. And as I said before, is every time that the trigger, so something, um, you know, you do get this trigger and then it leads into a habit. So if you get annoyed and you go for a lap, a lap around the block, that sort of gets ingrained in the brain and, it, brain and it strengthens the association between that habit and the trigger and it gets easier and easier and easier. And eventually it just turns into a very natural habit and you do it without thinking. And that's like, you can get really complex in the habit building world. I went down that rabbit hole a little while ago for some of my clients. It's very, very interesting, but we don't need to explore too much about that. But if you are working from home, there's a few ideas for you. Number one, break up your normal workout into some smaller workouts to do through the day. Pick your breaks wisely and just get out and do a lap around the block. Go do that Pomodoro technique of 25 minutes on, five minutes off, or give yourself a trigger somewhere around the world, um, around the house to sort of get yourself moving and do something positive. It's going to be tricky adjusting to home workouts and home training and just working from home in general. And as we said, optimal is probably going to go out the window at this stage and you want to look at practical. You just want to keep things positive, keep things moving forward and keep yourself in a good space and a good mental space during this time. So if you are working from home and you don't have kids running around, give one of those a go or two of those a go and I genuinely think it might make a solid difference. So have a lovely day guys, that's enough from me. Um, with this again, I have been saying the last few podcasts, if you haven't left a review for the podcast, I would really, really appreciate if you just took two minutes out of your day to go on whatever podcast pro- um, provider you are currently on and leave a short review. During this time, small business is getting hit hard. It's going to be tough. Summit Strength is going to be under a lot of pressure and just the small gesture of a review can really, really go a long way to keeping things moving forward, keeping this podcast going on and keeping the dream of Summit Strength alive. So I'd really appreciate if you took the time there. But thank you so much for listening today, guys, and have a lovely day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.